Jet engine manufacturers around the world indeed produce engines for aircraft that are certainly safe when flying at thousands of feet in altitude. However, it's important for you to know before being installed on an aircraft, a jet engine goes through a lengthy stage or testing process to examine its endurance. One example of the initial and most common test is the water or ice shooting test into the aircraft jet engine. We all know that bad weather such as major storms or ice storms can significantly disturb flight operations. Ultimately, airlines must delay flights resulting in losses for passengers. Therefore, this series of tests is absolutely mandatory for every jet engine that will be marketed. The process involves shooting 3,000 liters of water per minute into the jet engine. The purpose is to see how well the jet engine can withstand the onslaught of a large amount of water without reducing its thrust power. If the test goes perfectly, it means the jet engine is capable of getting through major storms that can happen anytime in the sky. And what about ice? The testing process is almost the same as the water shooting. However, the material used to shoot the jet engine consists of large and hard ice balls. The goal is to simulate when an aircraft must go through an ice storm, the jet engine won't be affected by ice particles entering the aircraft engine. Thus, the crew and passengers can safely arrive home and gather with their families. After the water and ice shooting tests, the jet engine will undergo another test phase that we find crucial but quite unique. This process is named the bird strike test. Uniquely, this process is carried out by shooting fresh chicken carcasses into the spinning jet engine. The purpose is to see how strong the jet engine is when it accidentally passes through a flock of birds. The hope is that when the jet engine hits a flock of birds, the blades within the engine remain intact. Thus, it remains safe at high altitudes. Indeed, aircraft crashes due to bird strikes might occur only once in 1 billion flight hours, making this test seem trivial to some laypeople. However, no matter how small the risk, it must still be anticipated, right? However, this test has drawn some backlash from animal lovers who criticize the use of animals in jet engine testing, despite the fact that the chickens used are already deceased. Airlines complain that the cost of repairing jet engines damaged by bird strikes reaches $1.2 billion or equivalent to 18 trillion Indonesian rupiah per year. It's a significant financial burden for airlines if they have to spend such an amount just because of birds. After the chicken carcass shooting test process, the jet engine will undergo a damage simulation. This simulation essentially acts like recreating a common engine problem, namely the detachment of a fan blade. This test aims to ensure that a detached blade doesn't damage other components, allowing the jet engine to still land in an emergency situation. Imagine a jet engine fan spinning at 3,000 rotations per minute, and suddenly one of the blades detaches. It would be extremely dangerous. It would be somewhat manageable if only the jet engine were damaged, but if it damaged the aircraft's body, that would be even more terrifying. That's why this test is crucial and also the most difficult test that a jet engine must pass. So how is the test conducted? Let me explain. The crew attaches a small explosive device to the base of one of the blade's roots. Once installed, the jet engine is activated to undergo the testing process. When the speed is deemed sufficient, one of the crew will activate the explosive device that was installed and boom, the jet engine immediately encounters trouble. Even if the engine stops, at least it remains intact, meaning it doesn't damage any external components. Let's move on to the next test, where the jet engine is no longer tested on the ground, but has entered the flight testing phase. The jet engines that have passed the previous test phase are finally installed on modified aircraft, also known as testbeds, to be tested during flight. 
test beds are typically taken from retired aircraft that are still in serviceable condition. One of the aircraft often used as test beds is the Boeing 747. Despite its outdated technology, Rolls-Royce trusted a Qantas 747 aircraft to be used as a test bed for its newest jet engine, spending as much as 70 million US dollars, equivalent to 1 trillion Indonesian rupiah, to acquire this retired aircraft. It's quite normal for a jet engine manufacturer as large as Rolls-Royce to spend such an amount just for testing purposes. The birth of a jet engine requires not just one or two certificates of safety. From these safety certifications, customers and even passengers can feel more comfortable flying on aircraft equipped with Rolls-Royce jet engines, especially since the jet engine has undergone hundreds of hours of flight testing. This ensures that the engine will be safe when installed on commercial aircraft. Once it meets the standards of airworthiness, the jet engine is ready to be marketed to aircraft manufacturers. However, many of you might not be familiar with jet engine manufacturers, even though their names are well known in the aviation world. For example, there's the American company General Electric. This company is actually the largest jet engine manufacturer in the world in terms of market share, followed by the British company Rolls-Royce. You might know this company as a manufacturer of luxury cars famous worldwide. However, Rolls-Royce also stands as the world's second largest and most prestigious jet engine manufacturer. Impressive, right? Rolls-Royce jet engines are not only commonly used in commercial aircraft, they are also found in famous fighter jets like the F-35 Lightning II. Initially, this American jet was powered by a turbofan engine from Pratt & Whitney. However, for some reasons, Lockheed Martin chose to partner with Rolls-Royce at that time, 